The Real McCoys, starring Walter Brennan, created by Irving Pincus. Want you to meet the family known as the Real McCoys. That's Grandpappy Amos, the head of the clan. He roars like a lion, but he's gentle as a lamb. And now here's Luke, who beams with joy since he may take Mrs. Luke McCoy. From West Virginia they came to stay in sunny California. Oh, Grandpappy Amos and the girls and the boys of the family known as the Real McCoys. Jingles. That sure is neat, Grandpa. Hey, Grandpa, we expecting company? No, why? Uh-oh. What's the matter, Grandpa? You ain't never seen a man dressed like that and carrying one of them little satchels that want packing a lot of trouble for somebody. <laughs> well, you need me doing the talking. Okay. Ah, good evening. I do. I'm Emmett Peabody. Uh, you're Mr. McCoy, I presume? Well, maybe I am and maybe I ain't, but if I was McCoy, uh, what would you want to be well, seeing you about? see, I represent Mrs. Ackroyd, who you know holds a mortgage on this property. Oh, yeah, well, I am Amos McCoy. Come in. Oh, thank you. Luke Kate. This Mr. Peabody. That's my grandson Luke and his wife Kate. Hello. He's Miss Ackroyd's lawyer. Watch him. <laughs> well, why don't we sit down? Thank you. Peabody. Thank you. Hello. Well, I'd like to congratulate you folks on the way the you've improved the appearance of this property. Yeah, well, we've been working mighty hard, Mr. Peabody. It's a very pretty little garden you've got out there. You've done wonders with the house, too. And now that you give us the sugar coating, would you mind giving us the pill? <laughs> yeah, your grandfather is a very direct person, I can see. Well, now, according to the agreement made between the late Benjamin McCoy, who I understand willed the property to you, and my client, Mrs. Ackroyd, the $3,000 she advanced to Mr. McCoy was to be repaid with interest at the rate of $50 per month. Said payments due and payable on the 15th day of each month. Well, I'm afraid we've fallen a little behind in our payments, haven't we? Three months to be exact. You know, under the terms of the mortgage, default of three payments entitles her to foreclosure. Foreclosure? That means Mrs. Ackroyd could take away our house, Grandpa. Take away the house? Well, I'm only carrying out my client's instructions. Couldn't you make some partial payment? We haven't got a penny right now. Yeah, we had one piece of bad luck right on top of another one. That first month, we, we had the mortgage money all ready and, and the mule up and broke his leg. <laughs> just how it is, believe me. You, well, if you could just get Ms. Ackroyd to wait until the fruit crop comes in. Thanks. Yeah, we're going to have a bumper crop, too. I bet you them peaches is going to run about two peaches in the truckload. Look, I'm just <laughs> representing Mrs. Ackroyd. Well, well, ain't there nothing you can do to get her to wait? Well, my hands are tied, I'm afraid. Couldn't you just to sort of uh, nudge you with your knee, like? <laughs> this may cost me a client. But seeing how you folks have worked so hard, I tell you what I'm going to do. Now, this is Tuesday. I'm going to give you until Friday. How about that? Well, it could be better. Where are we going to get $150 by Friday? Well, you have four days to figure something out. Believe me, my best wishes are all with you. Well, I'll see you Friday about this time. Well, goodbye, Mr. Peabody. Bye. Give our kindness to Mrs. Ackrod, would you please? Uh, Mr. Peabody, I got something you can tell me, Sam. Grandpa. Oh, I know just how you feel, Mr. McCoy, but what can we do? After all, we are dealing with a hard-headed businesswoman. I'll see you Friday. Bye. Looks pretty good. Well, I hope we didn't take off too much dirt. Maybe that is why it's holding head together. So don't you be talking that way in front of George McMichael, you hear? You're gonna spoil the deal. Well, there she is, George. You sure hate to leave her go. You can't have her unless you promise to give her a good home. <laughs> There's an old horse trader for you. <laughs> You're taking to get behind the wheel, but you'd never tell it by looking at his face, would you? Ooh, oh, no, that George is smart. He is. Yeah, he knows goodbye when he sees one. Yeah, it ain't often you can get one of these that ain't never been raced. I don't know, fellas. My sister's expecting me to get her a slightly newer model. A newer model? 
You ain't gonna pass up a pre-war automobile, are you? That's the paint that come on it. Look at them tires. Yeah, that's just what I'm doing. Well, that's practically new cape we put on there less than two weeks ago. Hey, George. George, come here and look at this sharp interior. Huh? You, oh, we patched that upholstery with cellophane tape so as you could see the genuine cotton stuffing. Put a set of shapes at the top end, huh? You, oh. Well, now, that's the best part of the whole deal. Even with a top up, any time you're mighty, you just stand up and take a look at the scenery. You can't do that in the middle of the Do me a favor, Amos. Relax, will you? Let me see. Yeah, look at that tidy little engine. <laughs> they really know how to make them in those days. <laughs> that ain't like them new ones all choked up with horsepower so the rest of the car can't keep up with them. How much mileage you been getting on her? George, you drive slow past any gas station. She'll inhale enough to carry you 50 miles. How fast would you go? Well, now I'll tell you, George. We'll give you a one-year guarantee. You don't get no tickets for speeding. Would you mind starting up the end? Uh, well, now about starting her up, uh... <laughs> on cold morning, she starts in a flash. I don't know how she's going to do in this heat. You, you give her a try. Yeah. Careful, Amos. Hear that, starter? Burns like a kitten, don't you? You know what I think, fellas? I think this car's just about in its last legs. Now, see and tell, you got your heart set. Now, don't get mad now, Luke. You can have it for 175. Come on, get out, fellas. Amos, Amos, Amos. I wouldn't give you a dollar 75 for this here piece of junk. You're fooling. I ain't fooling. Let's face the facts, Amos. Why, this here car is over 30 years old. Why, she's hardly broke in. You won't find none of them new cars will run as long as this car's run. I'll tell you what you do. See, seeing that you, uh, you can have it for um, 160, and I'll throw in a coil of wire. What? What do I need with a coil of wire? Well, what do you think's holding them fenders on string? <laughs> Let's forget the whole thing, will you? I don't want to buy this heap of junk. Now, why don't you let me loan you 150 dollars so you can pay off the George? I told you before, we're McCoys, and McCoys don't steal and they don't borrow. We've been raised to think they was pretty close together. Now, let's get back to the car. Hurry up with those things, Lou. Uh, yeah. Come on, Nathan! What are you doing with my musket? Oh, Kate told me to clean up all the stuff for the junk man. My musket? Is she getting soft in the head or something? Well, I tried to tell her, Grandpa. Luke, what's the matter with that wife of yours? Now, don't get mad, Grandpa. Kate didn't realize what she was doing. You see, George, us McCoys is mighty proud of that musket. Come on, Peppino, let's go in and give Kate a hand with the stuff for the jump, man. Where'd you get that musket, Amos? You see, just a musket, George. This is Henrietta. This has been in the McCoy family for nigh on to 200 years. Sure's your beauty. That's a uh, Baker Flintlock, by gosh. Huh. Let me... Well, let me look at it, will you? I ain't gonna eat it. This musket means more to me than both my arms. Sell it to the junk man. Why don't they sell me to the junk man? It's worth a lot of money, Amos. It's worth more than money, George. Exactly, McCoy. Help whip the redcoats with this musket. Tell you what, Amos. I know how bad you need that $150, and since you won't let me loan it to you, I'll, I'll give you that much for the musket. You won't give me nothing. Why, if I was to sell this musket, 30 or 40 McCoys would come down from heaven and whip the daylights out of me. Yeah. Now let's get back to the car. Amos, I ain't interested in your car at any price. Uh, but, uh, well, if you change your mind about selling that musket, though, uh, let me know. Be seeing you. Sell the musket. <laughs> Henry Eddie. King George couldn't get you away from us, McCoys. The engines tried it. Oh, God, doing Union Army couldn't make it, neither. So I guess we can stand off Miss Aykroyd and that stiff collared lawyer, Hearn. <laughs> yes, what time the man from Odds and End Source say he's coming here? He should be here any time now. Hey, look what I found. He's ought to fetch a pretty penny. 
Uncle Hiram stuffed skunk candelabra. Beautiful, ain't that? Look at the expression on that one's face. Uncle Hiram sure was a good stuffer. Lou, Grandpa, look what I got. Yep, where'd you get all that money? Well, there's 72 cents here. 72 cents? Where'd you get 72 cents, young fella? You robbing a bank or something? Nope, I come by it honest. I've been down on Center Street. Begging. Begging? Begging. Sure, it was real easy. I think that's what I'm gonna do when I grow up. You mean to tell me you was begging this money off of strangers on the street? Well, they wasn't exactly strangers, Kate. I introduced myself nice and kindly. I said, pardon me, sir. And if there's ladies, I said, pardon me, madam. My name is little Luke McCoy. And if we don't make some money real fast, we're gonna be kicked out of our house. Little Luke, how could you do a thing like that? Now you go right back to town and give them people back their money. Why? Well, he can't do that. How's he gonna find them? I don't know, but little Luke, I ought to spank you. I'll never be able to show my face in this town again. Jingle, try to help out and you they get mad. Ah, oh, now, wait a minute. I know how you feel about it, son, but you know, when you go to begging money from people like that, as young and healthy as you are, why, well, that, that's shameful. It is? It's worse than stealing. It sure is. Beside that, it's again the law. Now, don't you ever do nothing like that again. Us McCoys work for our money. We don't go begging for it. You understand? Good. The money's in here yet. Oh, oh, no. No, Pepina. You ain't gonna sell your guitar. No, sir. No, sir. And why not? Because this ain't your farm that's about to be lost. You only work on it. I know. But I have not been paid any money for so long. I feel like a member of the family. <laughs> now, you was telling me just the other day how much good that guitar does you when you're courting Conchita. Mm, only because she's so tall. I start on the guitar to kiss her. I can always use the telephone book. No problem. <laughs> I'm Feely, odds and ends. Howdy, Mr. Feely, come on in. This is my husband, Luke, and Grandpa McCoy, and our former, Pepino. All right. So, uh, this is the stuff you want to sell, huh? Yeah, if we can get what it's worth, there's a lot of valuable stuff here. Yeah, these genuine handmade articles here that folks in the city's got to pay hundreds of dollars for. I reckon some people have to pay thousands for some of these things. And things like this could be worth millions. Give you seven dollars for the lot. Seven dollars? <laughs> for everything? You're just joshing with us, Mr. Feely. I guess you didn't see them genuine stuffed skunk candlesticks, did you? Yes, I did. You better put them away. My wife's expecting you. <laughs> oh, wait, did you see this? The Union Army fired this here cannonball through the roof of our cabin in West Virginia. Now, that ought to be worth a lot of money. It would be if it had General Grant's autograph. I'm sorry, folks. I can't go a cent higher than seven dollars. Mr. Philly, how much if I throw in this fine Mexican guitar? I'm afraid I won't be able to use that. Uh, you never can tell. How tall is your wife? What's that? <laughs> now, Mr. Philly, now he's a solid brass bedstead. Solid brass, every inch of it. I know, Mr. McCoy. But people don't want to buy brass bedsteads these days. They've been out of style for years. Yeah, but if they come back, the fellow that has this will be rich overnight. Look, Mr. McCoy, I don't want to get rich. I just want to make a living, and I'm not going to do it if I pay more than $7 for all this stuff. All right. I reckon we don't want to do no business with someone that don't recognize genuine stuff skunk candlesticks. Grandpa, that's enough now. Mr. Feely's just trying to be honest with us. Oh, uh, that's all right, Mrs. McCoy. In my business, you get used to this sort of thing. People always overestimate the value of their personal possessions. Is that a Baker flintlock? 
Is that yours? It sure is. And it ain't for sale. Well, I'd be willing to give you some real money for that. Well, Mr. Feeney... Would... Grandpa's right. It ain't for sale. Mr. Feely, I'm awful sorry to have you come out here for nothing, but seeing as how this stuff is more valuable to us than it is to you, I, I, I reckon we better hold on to it. Yeah, I hope we didn't cause you no hard feelings. Think nothing of it. Happens every day in this business. Well, I better get back to my wife. Honey, how much money we got all together from selling eggs and preserves and cashing them pop bottles? Um, Eleven dollars and, and 46 cents. Not counting little Luke's begging money. And the man from the furniture store said he'd give us 32 dollars for the living room set. That is 43 dollars and 46 cents altogether. Yeah. He's got to be a way we ain't thought of to get some more money. There ain't a thing we don't need to keep alive that isn't in this pile except for I ain't gonna do it. I ain't gonna do it. There's some things in a man's life that means more than a roof over his head. Henrietta's one of them things to me. I don't think it's fair for you to want me to sell it. Nobody asked you to. No, you ain't asking me to sell it, but I know what you're thinking. You just think I'm a, a mean old man, that's what you think. We don't neither think you're a mean old man. We understand, because we love you. Here's another dollar for the mortgage money, Kate. Casey, wait a minute. Where did you get all this money? I sold my locket to Linda Fitzgerald. Casey, you mean you sold the locket your grandma left you? Honey, you shouldn't have done that. I was tired of it. Now, wait a minute. So how, how come last week when, when you thought it was... Now, look at me. How come last week when you thought it was lost, you stayed up half the night crying? Well, that was because I liked it last week. But this week, I, I was tired of it. Hmm. I guess I know when I'm licked. The only thing is, I hope... I die, I don't go to heaven. There's going to be a lot of McCoys mad at me up there. Well, I guess I'm holding on to your property, eh? But don't punch me in the nose, Amos. But I just want to say one last time, you don't have to sell it. I'll be glad to make you a loan of $150. Dead blasted, George, I told you. I know, I know, I know. The McCoys don't believe in borrowing. Uh, well, all right. Hand it over. Be good to, won't you, George? Oh, don't you worry. If I didn't appreciate it, I wouldn't be paying you all that money. Well, I guess that's it. So long, George. So long, Amos. And there's one more thing, George. Huh? What's that, Amos? When I come over to your place, will you sort of hide it so as I can't see it until I get used to the idea? Okay, Amos. Grandpa. Grandpa, you sure you don't want something to eat? You ain't had a bite all day. I told you ain't hungry. Grandpa, maybe just a bowl of soup. Tarnation, Kate, I told you All that... All right, Grandpa. Oh, I'm sorry, honey. It's all right. Did you get the money down to Miss Aykroyd all right? Luke went down the bank with it. Where is he? Where is the old thief? Give me back my money, you crook. What's the matter, George? You get kicked in the head or something? What's wrong, Mr. McMichael? What's wrong? Why, I paid good money for a busted musket, that's what. Why, I look at this here hammer. It don't come down true against the flint. You couldn't fire this thing in a million years. 
fire it. Of course you can't fire it. I'd like to see somebody try to fire you if you was 200 years old. That's a relic. That ain't no rabbit gun. You can talk till you're blue in the face. You sold me a musket that don't work. Now I want my money back. Yeah, I thought you knew about guns. I'd give you your money back so fast and make your head swim if I had it. We done give the money to Mrs. Ackroyd's lawyer, Mr. McMichaels. Well, darn the luck. So you gotta make the best of it, you old fool. Oh, oh no, you don't. You ain't palming this piece of junk off on me. You owe me $150. Where am I gonna get $150? When you harvest your crops. Or you can pay me back at a dollar a week. I don't care so long as I get my money back. And what's more, I'm a, a, I've had my shave. Leave an old mule to water. Maybe you can't make him drink, but sometimes you can force it down his throat. Huh? Good night. Night, Kate. Mr. McMichaels. 